So we're out on site now with Andy, who's going to demonstrate um, a cold start with the saw. The sequence we're going to go through on this is getting the position on the ground, securing the saw with his right foot on the rear knuckle guard. He's then going to place his left hand on the top handle, um, choke the saw, prime it, and then we're ready to, to pull and make the saw start. Now the machine's fired, Andy's going to turn the choke off, pull the machine again. Before he lifts the saw, he's going to blip the throttle, that returns the, uh, the engine to idle. And then he's going to do his, his checks, i.e. chain brake, lubricating the bar, make sure it's oiling. And the on-off switch. Perfect. So now Andy's um, started the saw from cold, from ground level. He's done his checks. Um, he's going to check the, or he has checked the side case boltings and the chain tension after that. Um, some scenarios the saw may flood and candidates will be taught how to deal with that accordingly. So once he's done all those checks and he's happy, we're ready to start with the cross cutting. So now we've done the pre-start checks on the saw from cold and he can now perform a warm start, which is from a standing position. He'll secure the saw firmly um, with his knees on the rear handle and fire the saw from that position. Position his torso away from the bar, not leaning over it, feet in the correct direction, parallel with the wood. Make the first cut, second cut to meet. So during the course, candidates are taught to do a number of cross cutting techniques, one of which Andy is about to demonstrate now um, identifying compression and tension. Obviously, if we have a piece of timber like Andy's got here, the weight would be at the end, thus forming the compression on the underside of the timber. We'd make a smaller cut there to release the pressure and then finish our cut on the tension side and that will avoid the saw getting trapped and a clean cut. So another cut uh, the candidates are expected to demonstrate is a bore cut. So Andy's going to do this now. He's going to approach the timber using just above the kickback part of the chain. Obviously this is important when we do our chain maintenance that we've got the depth gauges set correctly because this will increase the, the chance of kickback and make the saw very aggressive and hard to control. So once Andy's bought, introduced the bar into the timber He's then going to start adjusting it round and pushing the bar into the timber while standing behind and supporting the saw, reducing the risk of that kicking back out. We've got a little scenario here now where Andy's going to demonstrate actually getting the saw trapped during processing the timber. Uh, obviously we can do this in a controlled environment for demonstration purposes. So Andy, over to you.
Okay, Andy has beautifully demonstrated a trap saw scenario now for us. So candidates will be taught how to deal with this safely and what stages and procedures to go through. So first of all, he's turned the saw off. So that's the best thing you can do. Chain brake, saw off. You can then disengage the chain brake and see if the saw will actually roll. That will allow the chain to roll. Not quite. So can we do it another way? If you've got a colleague or someone around you, someone that can help and maybe physically lift the timber and move the saw, or use another aid such as wedges and levers. If that's not possible, in this case it is, but if it wasn't, we'd have to cut the saw out. So it would mean getting another saw and cutting a minimum of 12 inches away from that power unit. So now we've uh, safely and successfully removed the trap saw. Um, it just demonstrates the importance of identifying the compression and tension in the right way and is free now to continue processing the timber. Clearing any obstructions along the way, making sure the site's safe. So now Andy's processed the uh, tree, we're going to deal with the arisings according to the site specification. So we're going to stack the brush in this case, it could be chipped or dealt with in other ways. So they also leave the site neat and tidy, everything in one place. He's then going to stack the timber, bearing in mind safe lifting and handling, working in an ergonomic way to reduce musculoskeletal injuries. There's also tools that we'll give the candidates to use, some timber tongs and lifting hooks. And timber shouldn't be stacked more than a metre in height manually. This is to avoid any back injury. So now Andy's finished processing the timber on this site. We're getting ready to pack up and, and go. So he's going to place the scabbard on the saw, thus protecting that coming into contact with anything, and carrying the saw down by the side of him with the bar facing to the rear. So that concludes uh, the three videos. Um, hopefully that you'll find this very useful as a revision aid. We picked up on most of the key points that we'd put our candidates through. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. <laughs> no. so don't to like and subscribe. I thought you were joking about that. Your you, you're you taking the mic. Put my thumb up. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Andy's saying that bit, is he? No. No, I don't want my only words. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe. Well, you, I just want me to do that now. Rolling, yeah. Okay. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I know, I know. <laughs>